So the All You Hungry Children example that I just showed you in some of the earlier videos is, is a nice way to sort of see lists. Um, but the domain is perhaps trivial. I mean, how many of you are going to have students who want to create songs that have, or stories that have that kind of repetition? How many of you are going to want to make that kind of thing? So why would I teach you a list? What's the purpose of a list and how might you or your students actually use it? The, the, the thing I want to show you as the next example for lists is perhaps arguably a, a better way uh, or, a, or a more accurate way of how you might be inclined to use a list. And that is to create a simple kind of quiz situation. Um, you know, if you think back to the All You Hungry Children example, we had two parallel lists. We had the list of the days of the week and the list of the food. And I say they were parallel because, you know, slot number one in each list went together. Slot number one was Monday in the, the day of the week list, and it was the string beans in the food list. Slot number two was the Tuesday in the day of the week list, and, and it was the, uh, what was it, spaghetti in the, in the, the food list. And so, when you think about that idea of having two lists where the two things go together, one of the things that might pop into your mind is the idea of some sort of a quiz where you have one list, which is the questions, and another list, which is the corresponding answers. And in this particular video, we're going to start to make a quiz-like game. I'm going to do something not quite the same as a question and answer, uh, but do something that's very common in elementary school and maybe fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and that's the idea of a quiz to learn your state capitals. Right? So I'm going to create here a state capital quiz. The idea is that I want Scratchy Cat to come out and ask me what's the capital of Iowa, which I happen to know because I live in Iowa, it's Des Moines. What's the capital of uh, Illinois? Oh, that's Springfield, right? I want to have that kind of quiz. What's the capital of New York? Oh, it's New York City, isn't it? Nah, sorry, Scratchy Cat will tell me. No, it's actually Albany, right? I want to have that kind of, of a quiz. So I want to create the quiz that goes back and forth between uh, the question, which in my case is the, is the state, and the answer, which again in my case is the capital of that state. And if you're international, I understand that this is kind of a strange domain for you. You're not used to thinking about American states and their cities or capitals. But we could do the same thing for countries and their capitals, right? What's the capital of Spain? What's the capital of Malaysia? What's the capital of the United Arab, United Arab Emirates? What's the capital of Portugal? Right? We could do all of that. Um, Americans are probably woefully bad at that. Just, I suppose, like you would be woefully bad at telling me that the capital of California is Sacramento. Uh, but but let's, let's think about how that quiz would work. Okay? So, obviously, we're going to have to have two... Uh, lists. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a list for the state and I'm going to make another list for the capital of that state. And I don't know about you, but the idea of typing all 50 states into here and all 50 capitals, capitals into here is daunting uh, because my spelling skills and my typing skills aren't always the best and I'm going to end up misspelling Massachusetts. I'm going to misspell something like uh, Springfield and actually have somebody type the right answer when they tell me the answer of Illinois is Springfield. But because I had spelled it wrong in my answer key, they're going to get no credit. And so we want to find a better way to add to these lists than using the plus sign and adding things. I'm actually going to do that in a secondary video. So I'm going to stop this video and we'll look at ways to populate uh, lists in the next video.